Welcome everybody to another midweek devotion. Would you please turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 18? I'll read verses 1 to 6. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another vessel, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. You know, I doubt there is a, a more powerful image in scripture of God's sovereignty and lordship and design and patience than we find in this story of the potter and his clay. Of course, you will notice his first directed to the house of Israel, the wayward house of Israel, the sinful, rebellious house of Israel, but also we can learn ourselves from this story, as we're indicated in 2 Timothy 3.16, that all scriptures got inspired and is, re is good for instruction and education and so on. So verse 1, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Now notice, it's not spoken, it's a parable of deeds, not words. There's no conversation being recorded at all between the potter as he stands there working and Jeremiah who stands watching. He just stands and watches. I like what Spurgeon says about this verse of he just stands and watches in silence. He says, priceless as the gift of speech may be, in some aspects the practice of silence far excels it. Do you think me a Quaker? Well, be it so. As you know, Spurgeon was a Victorian, great Victorian preacher. And he wrote those words in a book that I actually read years ago called Lectures to My Students. Because he founded the Bible College in South Norwood, Spurgeon's Bible College, in 1855, when he was only 21 years old. Hallelujah. So, this is the word that came. And where it says word, the, Greek, the Hebrew word there is dabar. It means that which is spoken. There's no doubt about the source. We don't know if he audibly heard the voice of God, but he certainly, the voice of God came to him in a way he heard it, knew its source was God. It came from the Lord. And where it, the word came, the verb came is haya. It means to be birthed into existence from the heart of God. This was a very, very important message for the isolated pro prophet Jeremiah, surrounded by sin and degradation from the nation, very important message. So in verse 2, God instructs him, go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. Now don't, don't miss this. Go down to the potter's house. You know, um, pottery workshops were usually located outside towns that were on rivers, along the riverbanks. But Jeremiah was in Jerusalem, but he went down into the valley, into a valley, to see the potter in his house. Now there are no rivers, no rivers at all in Jerusalem. Not like in, in we, we have the Thames in London, Paris has the same, New York has the, has the, um, the Hudson River. But in Jerusalem there was no river. But as you know, um, water is needed not only for life for people, but also for the art of pottery. Well, where did the water come from? Well, it came from a spring in the valley down to which Jeremiah had to walk. For thousands of years, the Gion Spring in the Kidron Valley at the foot of the Temple Mount was the main source of water in Jerusalem. In fact, it was the only major spring in the city. Uh, Gion, G-I-H-O-N, means to gush forth. It was running water. Running water in the Hebrew is called living water. And so... There was, water came out from the ground, mainly. It didn't rain much in Israel. I like when I read the Acts chapter 2, and Peter called all these huge crowds to repent and be baptised. I thought, well, where are they going to be baptised? Where's the water? And of course, a few visits to Jerusalem, and you realise where the water is. It's kept coming, it came out of the ground and into what were called mikvahs, M-I-K-V-A-H, mikvah. They were Jewish ritual cleansing immersion baths. 
uh, where the, the Jewish person went down the steps into the water. There wasn't room for two. There was none of this baptising like we do now. And he baptised himself in the running water. Then he came up the other side, ritually cleansed to go in the temple. And these, these, these uh, bars surrounded the temples, the temple, even though, as you know, the temple was destroyed in AD 70 uh, by um, the Romans. But they didn't destroy these mikvahs. They're still there. You can see them. Today, when Jewish synagogues are built, they build mikvahs. Um, I was baptised in a Baptist church, and that had a, like a little pool built into the ground. And I went down some steps into the water, was baptised by the pastor, I went up out the other end. So it's amazing. So he's sent down to the valley to, to in this case, not anywhere near a river, but to a, jet, to a, a potter's house that had full access to water. Praise the Lord. Um, it happened to be, unusually, next door to the Valley of Gehenna, where the rubbish and the, the rubbish was uh, burnt in Gehenna. Jesus talks about the fires of Gehenna to the people. And uh, so the water supply was there through the springs under the ground. And um, that's where also next door in Gehenna, the wayward Israelites were worshipping gods like Moloch and Baal and uh, give, giving their babies to be to, alive, to be worshipped and sacrificed in this place of fire. But it was here where the shop was, the pot, how, potter's house was alongside in the Valley of Hinnom. They needed water, they got it, they, they raw materials. They say that the clay in this valley was perfect for uh, making pots. Uh, pray high quality, high quality clay for making pots. So he went down on instructions, verse three. Go down and I will give you my message. Verse three, so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the will. It's strange how the Lord may teach us about himself, give us revelation in strange places and in unusual places. When God spoke to John Bunyan, it was on Elstow Green. I once drove 70 miles just to see the green where John Bunyan heard the voice of God when he was playing tip cat, which is a kind of rounders with a ball. And um, if you want to see a picture, it's on my Facebook. Scroll down, you'll find it. Elstow Green where John Bunyan heard the voice of God, which turned his life round. So the Lord wants to take Jeremiah's eyes off the misery of the sin and rebellion which he's living among and to get his eyes on him, on the Lord and his words. It's the same with us. Um, he wants to refresh our vision. He wants us to give us more understanding of his purposes and plans. He wants us to prepare, especially today, for the coming of the Saviour, but also the ability to share the truth with the earth. Jesus is alive. So it's important sometimes, to, like Jeremiah, just to stand still. Um, you know that famous psalm, Psalm 46, Be still and know that I am God. Those words were spoken by the psalmist when Jerusalem was surrounded by Sennacherib in 1702 BC, about to destroy it. But God says, stand still. Don't, don't, I'll take care of Sennacherib. And we know he did in one night with one angel. 185,000 so enemy soldiers were killed one night. So he went down to the potter's house. Verse 4. But the pot the potter was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. We, we see now the awesome power of a word picture. The potter's actions are conveying his thoughts into the clay as Jesus the God is saying to Jeremiah I'm conveying my thoughts into you the clay and it's really worth um, noting that Isaiah and Jeremiah and Zechariah and Paul and so the psalmist all speak about the potter uh, it's a very interesting story to know about uh, it's just very very interesting now we move on I want to just mention, as I was studying this story, um, a lady called Adelaide Pollard wanted to be a missionary, go to Africa in 1902, but she couldn't afford the fare or the ability 
raised there needed money to go. She was really discouraged. But she attended a prayer meeting one evening and as she sat there in the church, she overheard an elderly woman praying like this. It really doesn't matter what you do with us, Lord. Just have your own way in our lives. And that elderly woman's prayer really did inspire Adelaide Pollard. She contemplated the story that we're looking at now, the story of the potter in Jeremiah chapter 18. And upon her return home, she wrote all four stanzas of the, of the, of the, of the hymn, or the song, before going to bed. It encouraged her. And she, she had a life, a very effective life as a Christian, but she never, she never was a missionary in that sense, into Africa. So, the pot he was shaping was marred in his hands. The word there, shaping, means shaketh, spoiled, ruined. Do you know, prophetically, that word shaketh in the Hebrew here is also found in Isaiah 52, relating in verse 14 to the visage of Jesus. His visage was marred more than any man's. It shows us the sufferings that Jesus endured. Marred. His physical appearance was marred. It's been said that no one can easily understand that and walk away from the love of God in his son. He was so marred. Just as this pot was marred in the potter's hand, so the son of God's visage was marred at the hands of his torturers. Verse 3. So the potter was working at the wheel. There's a rumble, rumble, the heat, the dust, the noise, and the fire, the, the stack pots waiting for firing, the oven's hot, and everything's very, 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 very um, busy, noisy. But God is teaching Jeremiah some interesting thoughts. Through the potter's touch and skill and preparation of the clay, the design that was in his mind began to rise on the wheel. And the slow process on the wheel slowly produced the plot. You know, really, the Lord is saying to us and was saying to Jeremiah, the, the turning of the wheel and the shaping of the, of the pot is really the circumstances of life. And for Christians, their application, their ups and downs in our lives. Uh, but remember this, all things work together for good to those who love God. And behind the touch of the potter, we're the clay. It's his plan of love in the mind being transferred into my life and yours to live out in our world. Jeremiah saw the moon of the spinning that round and round and round, and because it is that picture, daily life, circle of life, living it day by day, trials, troubles, tears, joys, failures, victories, defeats, all there in daily life for all of us. But all that, all that is happening is being moulded into his likeness more and more like Jesus. I like what King David says. Day and night your hand was heavy upon me. But he was forming David into the man of God he wanted. And he, it wasn't easy because, as you know, David was a rebellious guy in many ways. I remember reading a quote from Corrie Ten Boom, who, as you know, was taking the Rasmus book as a Jewish lady. Her sister died in Rasmus book and all her family were lost lost in, in, in the Holocaust. But she, her colleague Tembu said this, don't struggle to get out of rough hands. God uses rough hands to make us beautiful. That's wonderful. Maybe that's why prophetically it says of Jesus in Isaiah 50, I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. So back to verse 4. The clay was marred in his hands so that the potter formed it into another pot, shaping as seemed best to him. How do we relate to that? Well, he's really saying to us today, I'll do as good for you as you'll allow me to. I was reading about a modern master potter, and he said there are some peculiar things about clay. He said sometimes a lump of clay will just not respond to what you want it to do. So you have to give it a second chance and make it into what it will flow into. God's way with us. Failure is not final. God can reshape us, put us right. When we mess up and make our wrong choices, don't climb off the will of his love and movements and his spirit. Stay there. Make, keep making the choice between life and death, heaven and hell, light and darkness, Christ and Satan. But see how the patience of the potter 
marred though the, the, his job, why he makes it again, to some, this lump of clay, into something that would not be discarded. He wouldn't discard it. Marred, so he made it again. He fought it into another pot. And what does a pot do? It contains and then it dispenses. And that's the Christian life. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. And then that was in me, may it come out and bring uh, the, the blessings to people you want it to bring. You know, there are many examples of uh, marred vessels in the Bible. Um, think of Jacob at Jabbok. I mean, the cheat. The Lord re rejuvenated and forgave Jacob and gave him a new name, Israel, Prince with God. Think of Peter. Three times he denies Jesus. And he became the great apostle uh, who preached those amazing sermons in Jerusalem. A man of great courage and gave his life for the Lord. Think of John Mark. He really messed up when he went on the first missionary journey with Paul and Barnabas. And when he got as far as Pem Pergamon and Pamphylia, he'd had enough. Bye-bye, boys, I'm going home. And it really did upset Paul, as we know. Uh, Paul, thought, Paul wouldn't take him again <laughs> on the missionary journey, but he, he was reconciled back to Mark, John Mark uh, later, uh, as he, we read in the further epistles that Paul writes. Messed up. Don't climb off the wheel. So the Lord... Stoop down in grace to Jacob and Peter and John and Mark, Mark and other Bible characters, and certainly for me and for you, no doubt. What is the Holy Spirit saying? Never forget, failure is not final. We just need to grasp the Father's love toward us and choose to return, repent, and stay in His hands. And that's the message that God must gave to Jeremiah to give to Israel: repent, turn, and everything will be fine. But because they refused, and they ended up in captivity. When you think about your life, focus on this verse. God, who is rich in mercy, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. We needn't stay a failure. We just repent and get back to God working on us. Never forget, he wants all men to see we, you, we as Christians, are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works and, and, and for eternal life. And never forget, this life is the only first page of the book. We're not at the last page yet. We'll never get to the last page. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in we, we've often sang in Sunday school. And that's what we want. And it's only through his grace and forgiveness and when we're marred, working on us and bringing us back to something special. Uh, it's only due to him that we can be vi viable witnesses of truth and love. So Jeremiah, look at verse 11. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, I am preparing a disaster for you and dressed, devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, reform your ways and your actions. Well, what we don't find in our story is any hint of God's impatience with, with us, the, the, which is revealed in the total patience of the potter with the marred lump of clay. There's no annoyance, there's no frustration on the part of the potter. He just gets on. Things are messed up, he puts them right. And we can say today, our mistakes, our failures are no problem to him. Of the Lord, we can say, Lord, we make us. We need to make that choice and not listen to the, the enemy say, now you've done it, you've messed things up, you're finished. But we're never finished with the God who's revealed through this unspoken parable of the potter that Jeremiah saw in the potter's house. There's a song I want to play which is about the potter's house. Now to you, I searched it before I came online and we will, you'll hear it. I want you to be blessed by this song. Jim Reeves is singing this song. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way.
still Have thy own way Have thy own way Search me and try me Master Just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Spirit, till all can see Christ, only always living in me. Friends, I want to just close with a, a verse from Book of Acts that speaks about Judas when Jesus had betrayed Jesus he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders I have sinned he said I have betrayed innocent blood what is that to us they replied that's your responsibility so Judas threw the money into the temple and left then he went away and hanged himself the chief priest picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury, since it is blood money. It was the blood money of Jesus. It cost Jesus his life. This was the blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for the foreigners. Now the potter's field was where Jeremiah had gone down to, to see the potter. Uh, and Why was there a potter's field? Well, it's very interesting, but there was a gate called the Potsherd Gate. It's wrongly called in the authorised the East Gate. The Potsherd Gate led into the potter's field. And what was the potter's field? Well, it was where they threw all the broken pieces that didn't that, that were marred or, didn't, or broken and were of no use. They threw them into this field. They were useless. And that's, that's why it's called the... Uh, well, it's called the field of blood as well in the Bible because it was the blood money paid for paid to Judas to betray Jesus with that kiss in the Garden of Gethsemane. But this is the point, you see. This is amazing. So here is a field with all broken pieces, but it was purchased with the blood money of Jesus. I like to think lives can be broken to pieces, and but they've all been paid for by the blood of Jesus, and they can be brought again into a perfect vessel for, his, for the Master's use. So God bless you. Potsherd means broken pieces of, of, of pottery. And that's what this field was. The potter's field was full of all that stuff. But you see, it was purchased with the blood money of Jesus. And it's that thought, really, that all these, all these broken pieces, uh, they're all being paid for by the blood of Jesus. In our lives, all our broken bits and pieces, all being paid for to form us into this perfect vessel fit for the Master's use. Now, when I say that, can I just say this? Now pray. For the Lord to wash you clean through the blood of Jesus, fill you with his spirit. So out from the overflow of that spirit comes words of life to men and women sharing the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ, the patient heart of the Father in Jesus' name. God bless you.